This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and, uh, well, the owner of this one heard a pop, and since then, it just hasn't worked. Now, for those who are new around these parts, pops are never a good thing to hear around any electronics whatsoever, particularly gaming PCs where you've got multiple components involved. If this, in fact, stemmed from the power supply or even originated on somewhere like the motherboard, it could potentially take things like the CPU and the graphics card with them, and these ain't cheap. So, let's get to this one then, shall we? Can we get this thing to work again? Let's find out. Stay with me. If you're looking for something to keep your pets entertained, even while you're away from home, check out the Enabot Ebo Air. It's a robot capable of roaming your house with real-time monitoring functions. Use built-in AI tracking to intelligently recognize nearby humans and pets and enable patrol mode to scope out the environment for peace of mind while you're on long trips. You can even manually control the Ebo Air through the mobile phone app and select between various maneuvers to keep your pets and little ones entertained. This thing's actually pretty fun and definitely worth checking out. It self-charges with a single click, navigating automatically to its included charging pad, and can be totally hands-off if you want it. Infrared night vision, built-in video recording, it's all there, and sure to not disappoint. Learn more about the Enabot Ebo lineup of friendly robots by clicking the link below. For those who are new to this playlist, welcome. Fixer Flop is all about fixing PCs, or at least attempting to. Uh, folks who live in or around Orlando, Florida and have broken systems are eligible to apply via the link in this video's description. Uh, if it doesn't turn on or uh, maybe it doesn't post, something along those lines, I'd like a chance to fix it for free. We charge nothing for the service. You just have to drop it off and pick it up in person. All right, let's see if this one fires up. Uh... Getting power. It, yeah, it's totally bricked. Now I'm aware that something like this could seem catastrophic, and yes, it very well could be uh, if there is a major component malfunction going on here, but this could also be the, the result of something very simple. Maybe the front IO pins weren't correctly connected to the motherboard. It could be that simple. Uh, it could be maybe a power supply, power connector, something at the rear that's not plugged in correctly. So we've, we've, we can't really just rule out the super simple stuff here and because of that we're going to start from the ground up with the basics. I started by disconnecting all non-vitals so HD audio, USB 3.0, SATA data, etc. That's all disconnected. We just have the two PCI self metal power cables, uh, the 24 pin and the 8 pin EPS connected. Uh, this will rule out any finicky peripheral uh, gear, maybe miswiring, something like that. Uh, right out of the gate. This smells almost like a smoker's rig. I think that's <clears throat> why my allergies are acting up a little bit. But uh, all right, so let's see if we can jump the system, but nope, we still got nothing. We also tried clearing the CMOS, still nothing. And his RAM is seated properly, although it looks like these modules are on the incorrect dims. I think slots two and four, A2 and B2 are the correct ones for this board. We'll confirm in the manual, but this alone shouldn't be the reason why a system outright doesn't power on. Nonetheless, a single stick of DDR4 from my own personal stash doesn't work with the rig either. You know, it's weird because we aren't getting any sort of auxiliary power to peripherals either. I mean, what's still attached, right? My DDR4 dim is not lighting up at all. That's usually what happens when you flip a power supply on at the rear. Even with the system off, there is a tiny bit of power moving through the system. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so what I think it could be at this point either a totally bricked power supply, it could be a totally bricked motherboard, or something super obvious that's not wired correctly behind the motherboard tray. We're gonna start there. I know you won't see this from your vantage point, but everything that is still attached to the motherboard and graphics card is connected properly on the power supply side as well. So it's definitely not that. Uh, there's not really much else here to see. There's this one additional SATA power cable that's not attached, but this runs like peripherals and things. This has nothing to do with the uh, components that are still attached to the motherboard and graphics card. So now let's try testing this power supply. Let me drop the ISO a bit here so you can see the screen. That's pretty good. We're gonna hold down power. This should power up the unit by itself. Ooh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Voltages fail. Oh my gosh, every rail virtually in this unit is totally freaking cooked. That is a, uh, that's a first here. This looks like a, a yeah, it just looks like the power supply is nuked. All right, well that keeps things simple for us. So now what I wanna see is if we bypass this power supply completely with one of our own that we know works, can we get the system to post? 
So we do get a blinking power light above the power switch. Let's see if I can push the power button. Nothing, really. Oh, come on, please. Please, I don't want this to be a multi, multi-component fail. Oh, but it looks like it, looks like it is. Yeah, this board is probably bricked as well. Holy cow, what has this rig been through? You can see there's a subtle blinking green LED above the power switch and it, that's all it does. This is the only sign of life in the whole rig is just this flashing light. I'm not sure what to make of it other than the board being nuked. Now I actually have a Maximus Hero board. Uh, this is Z270, just like his chipset. This is a bit of an upgrade for him. And I'm okay using this and, and giving this to him along with the replacement power supply if indeed both components need to be replaced. However, this is where I draw the line. If I find any other component in this rig, including the graphics card or CPU, that needs to be replaced, I, I'm not, I can't replace three different things at one time. I have no idea what this rig has been through or why it needs the components that I think it needs at this point, but I, I can't just give him an entirely new system. I have way too many applicants in the Fixer Flop queue to be spending this much time and, and this much money, frankly, this many resources on one user. By the way, I've even gone so far as to remove his discrete card from this rig just to narrow down the motherboard and the CPU. Actually, I don't even have any RAM installed here. Um, just because you can get a system to at least power on without RAM. It won't post without RAM, but it should power on. So that removes an extra variable. So we literally just have two components here, uh, along with a known working power supply uh, running together. And we still cannot get power. I cannot manually jump, which again is why I think this motherboard is, is bricked. Totally cooked. Let's see, what CPU are we working with here? Looks like a Core i7, 7700K. Okay, cool, so a pretty, uh, pretty beast chip for the time. The underside of his chip looks to be in decent shape, no articles of loose clothing, nothing covering the uh, pins here, so all in all, pretty good for its age. And likewise, socket also looks fine, no obvious issues, no bend pins, no debris in the socket itself. We're looking pretty good so far. We'll see if uh, there are other physical issues with the board, but for now, I'm more concerned about getting the system to post. We can look at this later, if in fact swapping the motherboard fixes the problem. All right, so the only component in here that is still his, that is attached to the rig, is his CPU. If this still doesn't work, then it's either a dead CPU and a dead motherboard and a dead power supply, or just a dead power supply and dead CPU, and the motherboard was just kind of kicking it, just like, hey, Everything's broken on either side of me, but I'm Gucci. I, I doubt that, but <laughs> you never know. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and power this on. Ooh, we have lights. That is a great sign. I've actually bypassed the discrete cord entirely. That's still removed right here. And uh, so we've got the HDMI cable running directly into the motherboard because this being a 7700K, uh, it means that we have integrated graphics. So we should be able to, yeah, fire it up, okay. Fan spinning. Let's see if it stay. Yes. Okay. That actually looks. That looks. That looks good. It's cycling through. We have a doctor debug on this motherboard, so that's that's really going to help us out. Um, any sign of life here would be nice at this point. Yes. Okay. All right. So his CPU is fine. That. Uh, Whew, that was a that was a close call. So at this point, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start working backwards. Now, two things that uh, I suspect are dead. Obviously, his motherboard is one of them, and his power supply is the other. His power supply is still in this case, and I am not going to touch it for the remainder of this video. It will sit in there. I will I'll do something with it, but it's not gonna touch any of this replacement hardware. I don't want to risk any of it being damaged by that uh, possibly defective unit. Just based on what my tool was telling me, it looks like a no-go. It also looks like it potentially took this motherboard with it. Now I have a replacement 7700K in here now, and I was thinking about powering it on just to confirm that this motherboard is fried. Again though, the only variable we changed between the last few clips and this one was the motherboard. That was it. We only had his board and his CPU in the system with my replacement power supply and we couldn't get a post with that board. So I'm 99% sure it's dead. Um, I might follow up later on the video just to confirm that it is, but uh, I don't want to, I really don't want to risk, you know, killing my own known and working 7700K just because I, I want to have it for future 
testing future videos like this, so we'll see. I'm gonna start working backwards from this point on. Again, neglecting his power supply, I'm gonna start attaching things like SATA data cables, HD audio, USB 3.0, pretty much all the way up to the point where he's got a new power supply and everything else in there is the same. Uh, well, obviously a new uh, new motherboard as well. So we'll see, we'll see where we go. Hey, would you look at that? Everything has been reconnected, save his SSD, which I, I wanna confirm that once we get a replacement unit in here. Our test unit uh, has everything up and running so far, the graphics card, uh, his RAM, all the fans are wired back in. They look really good. Uh, we aren't getting RGB, that's because again, an extra SATA power cable needs to be connected there. But uh, we get a post, that means his graphics card looks fine, and uh, all of his other major hardware. So that's good. Now we need to replace the power supply itself. So we'll be going with a Be Quiet Straight Power 11 unit. Now this is a 750 watt unit. You can get these up to 1000 watts or more. Uh, this is also 80 plus gold certified, but they also offer straight power 11s with 80 plus a platinum certification. Fully modular, silent wing span built in, so very, very quiet operation and a five year warranty for peace of mind. 750 watts should be plenty for his rig. He only has a 7700K in it, if you remember, and also a GTX 1080 ASUS Strix variant. Uh, so they're not gonna be like super power hungry by today's standards. And 750 watts should even give him a uh, decent lead way for upgrades down the line. So that'll be nice. The modular design means you'll only need to connect cables that, uh, well, you're gonna be using in your rig, which should save some space. And it helps that the housing itself is not very long like some units out there. I'm also gonna throw in some sweet Be Quiet themed custom sleeve cables. These are gonna be the icing on the cake. So we'll go ahead and slide it on in. It's gonna be a tight squeeze top to bottom, but uh, yeah, we'll just carefully wiggle it in here. Alrighty. And we'll get everything wired up, including what wasn't wired up before, like this RGB hub. Got this SATA SSD down here. We need to power up, I think. That is it. We'll just cable manage a tad and then we'll try to power it on. A few moments later. And here we are. So the system is uh, all fired up. All the RGB is working now. Just connecting that single uh, SATA power cable that was loose earlier. Uh, fix the RGB problem and we're, we're here. We have a post. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna hop into the BIOS real quick and double check that his SSD isn't totally fried. Uh, and uh, there's not gonna be an OS on it because he hasn't really been able to install anything on it because the system's been broken since he got it apparently. So I'll let him decide if he wants Windows 10 or 11 or Linux or whatever on it. But uh, this is great. So <laughs> apart from the broken PSU and the uh, more than likely broken motherboard, everything else was working. That's good. I'm glad we could get the system back up and running for him. And in a bit of a panic here, I got a pretty big mess just getting this uh, quick little test bed set up. This is his motherboard, known working DDR4, known working CPU, known working power supply. We still get the blinking LED symptom just above the power supply or power switch, excuse me. And if we push the power switch or attempt to jump uh, the board down below, we get nothing, no reaction from the system, no lights on the DRAM. So. Uh, this, this motherboard is definitely bricked, and again, I assume his power supply is as well, but I'm not going to play games with that. I'm going to trust my, uh, my Passmark PSU tester, and uh, yeah, not let it get anywhere near all this other gear. So, this one was, uh, yeah, a bit of a doozy. Two different things, totally cooked, motherboard and power supply, but at least his rig is up and running again. We fixed up cable management a bit for him. Uh, got custom cables in there, I think, with that uh, straight power 11 power supply from Be Quiet. Looks really good. Big thanks to them for being the product sponsor of this video. Even convenient, we have a Be Quiet uh, air cooler for the CPU as well. So I think the rig cleaned up quite nicely. It's still a bit dusty, uh, but I was just tasked with fixing it. And we did just that. So we're gonna go ahead and end it here. Remember, if you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and you want a chance to have your system fixed for free, be sure to fill out the form linked in the video description. Uh, comment down below, consider liking the video, subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.